Oh my goodness. Hello. Hi everyone. I'm so happy to be here. It's been a while. I haven't come on live, but here I am today and I'm so excited. It's so good to see you. And even best is that um, I'm here with all the details about the, the summit that is happening in July. As you know, this year we're starting registration earlier, sometime in May. Um, actually, not sometime in May, <laughs> on the 8th of May, which is this Sunday. So um, I thought I'll just come on every day to, you know, just um, talk about the summit and answer any questions, you know, and just sh keep sharing details every day up until um, sign up starts on, on Sunday. It's been hectic. The behind the scenes is always so, there's always so much going on, but I'm so glad that um, we're still doing well. We've started quite early. So um, I'm happy with the way things are going. So I'll just take a few minutes. I'm actually like, I started early. So I'll just take a minute or two to just chat. And um, while we wait for more people to come on and then we will, we will just get talking. Um, but quickly before, before we actually start, I want to talk, um, Shannon, could you get me my, give me this, the, the map. I've been sharing this in the group and I've made progress with it. I am ready to start quilting and it's so difficult. So I tried, I tried um, going over the, the map and zigzagging, you know, on the borders. I don't know if you can see. So this is the zigzag, but I'm not happy with it. So I think I'm going to loosen the stitches and then I'm going to hand stitch because it's so tiny. My sewing machine is, the throat is so small. I'm turning and turning and it's not working. And I don't like the way it is. It's not so even. I don't know if you can see it here. I'm skipping stitches. So I'll just go ahead and hand stitch. So if you have any um, advice or recommendations, you can you can share them with me. Come on, Tiki. Okay. Great. So it's it's 3 p.m. for me. I'm, I'm hoping I got the time right at um, 9 a.m. Central, which would be 10 a.m. Eastern. So I hope that I got the time right. But right now it's like... Um, afternoon, 3 p.m. afternoon. And so what I want to do is every day for the next few days, I want to come on at 3 p.m. every day um, so we can talk about the summit. Now, before I do anything, I want to introduce myself because I know we've had a lot of people, new people in the tribe, uh, lots of new people in the tribe. And I don't come on as often as I used to. So, oh, great time is for it. Thank you, Montika. Yeah, so um, I just want to say, um, introduce myself and then share everything that I can about the summit. So my name is Miriam Galadima Benson. I'm the face behind Quilt Africa Fabrics and the Quilt Africa Fabrics Tribe and the African Fabrics Movement. So if you can hear me, I'd love for you to let me know where you are watching from, um, your name, where you're watching from, and what time it is. Because it's always so interesting to see um, all of us from different time zones and from different parts of the world. You know, So um, let me know your name. And please don't forget to give StreamYard permission to capture your name from Facebook so that I can, I can know who is speaking. That would really help a lot. Um, so just drop your name, where you're from, and where you're watching from, and what time it is. I'm Miriam. I'm in Abuja, in Nigeria, in West Africa. Just to give you context, to kind of like place me, um, and it's 3 p.m., just two minutes past two. So, um, yes. Oh, Priscilla, St. Paul. St. Paul is in... Okay, I don't, um, I don't know where St. Paul is. And it's nine. Okay, so that's central. That's Eastern time. No, that's central. <laughs> okay, that's central. 
Okay, great. Um, yeah, some flowers fake cancers, and it's 902. Okay, that's central as well. Okay, great. So thank you so much for coming, Priscilla. Thank you so much for coming, Montika. Um, yeah, so... Okay, so as I was saying, my name is Miriam. I'm the face behind Quilt Africa Fabrics. You probably don't see me so much in the group, but um, I'm always behind the scenes like a squirrel just working away. Um, but I'm always so happy to see everyone. And I've been so excited to see the new people that have joined the tribe. And I just want to welcome you. Just extend a warm welcome to you, a warm African welcome, a warm Nigerian welcome to you. Thank you so much for being a part of the tribe. I hope you have been inspired by the pictures and the projects that everyone has been working on. And honestly, if you scroll down, like just keep scrolling down, further down in the group, you get to see so much amazing work that everyone has done with, um, with African fabrics. Hi, Miss Sauda. Thank you so much for coming. North Carolina is 10 a.m. Okay, that's that's Eastern time. Great. Thank you so much for coming here. Yeah. Um, Priscilla is in Minnesota. Okay, that's the one state I don't know a whole lot about, but I'm learning. Yeah. So um, this is what the tribe is about, the Facebook group, us as a collective of people who love African fabrics, who work with African fabrics, you know, that you get inspired and that you have a community. Community is so important because people are in, involved and engaged in different things. And sometimes when you, when what, when what you're interested in isn't, isn't represented, you tend to feel a little bit lonely and a little bit out of it because sometimes no one quite understands where you're coming from. But that's what is great about the Facebook group. We are, we all understand. If you're talking about color, if you're talking about patterns, if you're talking about whatever it is that, as it concerns um, African fabrics in quilting or textile art, we all understand. And everyone would give you their best advice, you know, just to make sure that whatever it is that you're doing comes out well. So, as you know, Quilt Africa Fabrics started out as a fabrics shop. Um, where I just go into the, my markets, my neighborhood markets in Abuja and sometimes other states of Nigeria and sometimes into Togo, into Ghana, into Benin Republic. And I get the best fabrics that we have in the markets, the best fabrics that we have in the market. And, I, and that's what I ship across to, to everyone for their projects. Thank you so much for coming, Bonita, from Maryland. Maryland is Eastern, I think, as well. So that would be about 9 a.m. Yeah, so thank you so much for coming. So essentially, that's what Quilt Africa Fabrics is about. Sometimes I get questions about um, where can I buy African fabrics. We have a store. I think it's linked to the group. But if it's not, then I better do something about it. That's what we do. We sell African fabrics. Um, Either you can find it in the store or you can send me a message and I'll definitely make sure that whatever it is that you want is, you know, is, um, is available to you where possible, if available at all here. Yeah. So um, it's nice to meet you and I thank you once again for coming. So we'll just get right into it. So um, I don't know if you've ever attended any of our summits. I just, for this time i just really want to just kind of go back you know go back into the last three years and talk about how the idea for the conference came about and how we were able to put it together and then how last year went because this is the third year that we're hosting the online summit and so just to kind of give you a kind of background because i am so excited that it's that for three years running we're actually having the the summit, you probably, if you're new, you probably won't understand what that means to me, but I want to touch on that so that um, you can just forgive my overexcitement. <laughs> it's really huge for me that three years running, we're hosting the summit. So um, maybe if you hear a little bit about my story, you'll understand my excitement and you will forgive me. 
So that's what I want to do today. Um, I also want to talk about the African Fabrics Movement, why it started, why, why the business, why and how the business started Quilt Africa, why and how the, I initiated the African Fabrics Movement and how the summit coming up this summer in July is an integral part of the movement, you know, and everything that we do at Quilt Africa Fabrics. And then I'll give you a little, a little hint about what we'll be talking about tomorrow. So I hope that I can see you and you will come. And, um, and then of course, if you have any questions at all, um, I'd love to hear that about anything, anything at this point, whether the, the tribe, you know, anything at all, um, for the next few days, that's what I'm going to concentrate on, just um, giving information, answering questions, and all of that. Yeah, so. Okay, so. Back in 2016, I decided to make a quilt. And for reasons not even known to me, but just because I was just fascinated with the patterns, you know, the pieces, the squares, the... Hi, Michelle, good morning. Thank you so much for coming. Tell us where you are watching from and what time it is. Um, like I said, I'm in Abuja in West Africa, and it that's GMT plus one for other people in Europe or in Australia. We work with GMT. Um, so that's GMT plus one. That's my time zone. Um, that's in line with Berlin and Paris. Um, so that's that's our time zone. Yes. So as I was saying, like 2016, I decided to make a quilt just because I was fascinated with the, the way patterns, the patterns, the quilting patterns were created, you know, and I, and I did quite a bit of research. In fact, I think at a point in time, I was paralyzed by my over paralysis. You know, I really wanted to do it, but I was so nervous. Most of the, this was what I noticed. The, the traditional patterns were all Western fabrics. The African fabrics were all art quilts. And I wasn't confident enough to start with art quilts because it just seemed a little, a step higher than I wanted to, you know, start at the moment. And the traditional patterns didn't, we're not using fabrics like African fabrics, like the Ankara, you know, or the Adire that I had around me at that time. So I over-researched. I kept wondering, if I did the nine patch with the Ankara, would it still come out well? Okay, I, then I saw Indonesian batiks and thought, okay, maybe I should use Adire because the Adire is kind of similar to the Indonesian batiks. And so I spent weeks just flipping through Pinterest, reading blog store, um, blogs um, about how to make your first quilt, watching YouTube videos, you know. But at the end of the day, it was so stressful for me because I had to improvise a lot. I had to overextend my imagination, keep taking out the pastels, colors, and the um, low-scale, you know, patterns of Western fabrics and trying to put in the exuberant fabrics of Africa in. And then I'd be wondering, how does it work? How does it work? Anyway, so I did that for quite a number of weeks. I'm sure it was maybe up to two months. I was just contemplating, wondering. And so one day I just decided, I took my tape and my pair of scissors and I started cutting four and a half squares. I cut and cut and cut and cut. I cut much more than I needed, to be honest, because I just wasn't sure. How do I begin to arrange these colors and all of that? Now, if it comes to dressmaking, no problem. I can easily say, do this, do this, do this. But somehow, I felt that for quilting, it would be different. You know, so, but eventually, after many months and trials and all of that, I finally got my quilt out. I shared it into quilting, you know, the, the Facebook group quilting. And I got such a huge response. And people were like crazy over the fabrics. And the encouragement was really amazing because you know as a first timer you know it's not perfect but that someone recognized the efforts that you put in into making it i was really very happy so i made a few friends and um things progressed from there 
you know every day i would i mean i had so many comments and most of the comments were where can we get these fabrics where can we get these fabrics so at that time i made friends Sue Griffiths being one of them said, hey, you need to start selling these fabrics because people want them, you know. And so she helped me. We put our heads together and I learned so much. She was giving me quilting lessons at some point, you know, just teaching me so everything that I needed to know that I didn't know at that point. And so that was how Quilt Africa Fabrics was born. But then I found out that even though people loved the fabrics, they didn't know how to use them, you know. So... Um, that was in 2017. The next year, I started the challenges. You know, um, I started the challenge, and the, the turnout wasn't very good. But I was really excited that a few people signed up, and we got a few finished work submissions. You know, so that was really exciting. And then the next year, it occurred to me that I needed to do something more. Because the problem was not that people didn't want the fabrics. People were buying the fabrics, but people were not really using the fabrics. And I realized that it was just that information gap. You know, and that was when I decided that, look, we needed to take this thing serious. And then the idea for the African Fabrics Movement um, came to me. And so what the African Fabrics Movement is, is just about providing information. So if you look at the whole Quilt Africa Fabrics in uh, everything about Quilt Africa Fabrics is just geared towards a movement, a movement of information, a movement of giving comfort, a movement of, of making you feel comfortable and confident, you know, and just making information accessible for you to just take the plunge and use African fabrics. Hi, I can't see your name, but thank you so much for coming. Um, so we're playing a game here. We're finding out where you're watching from and the time. And maybe if you could drop your name, I'd really appreciate that as well. Um, so I can respond to you directly. So that's what Quilt Africa Fabrics is all about. And so we started hosting challenges. I started giving like talks, you know, about culture, about um, the care of, of the fabrics and um, as well as just encouraging people to put out their works. And so that was when the group um, came alive, you know, because even the Facebook group is really part of the movement. It's all about that, just finding a space where you're comfortable, you know, you're comfortable and you're inspired. You might come in and you are not even a quilter or you've never ever put, um, made a quilt, but just seeing everything that people are putting out, the way they're using their colors, the innovative ways they're using the patterns, you know, fussy cutting the fabrics and there's just so much and then you're soaking it up. You know, as you're soaking it up, you're learning and um, the most important thing for me is that it's a place where you know you can ask questions specific to African fabrics in your craft and you'll get amazing answers. That was so important because that was one thing I didn't have. I just didn't have that. I didn't have anybody I could call and say, hey, I want to use this blue and this one that looks like blue, green and all the colors in the world in the fabric. But do you think it will work? You know, so one of the best things about Quilt Africa is our group because we have people from all the continents, you know, um, all the continents, even though Verna is in Asia, um, she's American, but you know, she is in Asia. So I can confidently say that we have all people from all the continents of the world, you know, who just love African fabrics, who create with African fabrics or want to create with African fabrics or appreciate African fabrics. You know, not everyone in the Facebook group has a connection, a direct connection to Africa. For some, they lived there, their parents worked there or they worked there, you know, or for the, they are from there. Um, you know, or they, they have their ancestry um, is from Africa. But for some people, it's just about the fabrics. And that's okay as well. It's not an ethnic, um, it's not an ethnocultural, there are no ethnocultural restrictions. That's what I'm trying to say. It's just a place for creativity, you know, and that is not to discount the, the happenings in the world, you know, the, the issues, you know, that come up, um, as a result of race and as a result of um, the fabrics and all of that. There are questions that, um, that's 
the aspects that we try to tread on carefully. We, we don't want to disrespect anyone, um, but we also always want to foster a message of peace and love and understanding. And above all, that beauty heals and beauty connects, you know, and that's really what the fabrics is about. And for me, honestly, that's what Built Africa Fabrics is about. Just having that comfort, comfortable place where I can, I can, I'm playing for the first time I'm doing collage. Well, not the first time, but the first time I'm doing it on my own, you know, and, um, and I can just post that into the group and I can get feedback or I can send a personal message to someone I've met in the group, you know, and they can coach me through. So for me, that is really invaluable resource for me. Um, being a part of the tribe, generally being a part of the Facebook group is, is, is wealth. <laughs> for me, it's just wealth, you know. So that really is the overview of where we are coming from. Now, three years ago, I, yes, we sure need peace, love, and kindness. We do, you know, we do. And I think because you extend peace and you extend love and you extend kindness, it doesn't really mean that you are not, you're, you're unaware of the issues. But everybody needs a safe place. Everybody needs a place where um, after the arguments, you can come in and you can just relax. Or after the debates or after being bashed on the outside, you can just come in and you can just drop all of that and get into your creative mode, you know, and you can express yourself because that heals. And incidentally, that idea of your creativity impacting your, your mental health and elevating your mental health is one of the themes for this year's conference because it's so important. You know, it's so important. Because for me, I find that when I'm rushed and, and there are demands on me on every side, I'm not able to create but the minute I say, okay, stop, I need to do something, even if it's just a block, then all my peace just comes back because I take my mind out of a place of stress and demands and I just bring it back to a place of creativity and I connect with myself and it just decompresses me, you know? So that, that is so, so important. Now, three years ago during COVID, prior to COVID actually, I think sometime in February, I... Prior to COVID for me, COVID didn't start for us till maybe towards the tail end of March. So sometime in March, I just said, hey, the time is right to just host a conference where we can get people who are comfortable and expert at using the fabrics or even just bold, just brave, brave. Sometimes that's all it takes. We don't even need you to be an expert. We just need you to be brave enough to take the step, pull everybody together and then Let's just talk about what we love, you know? And so that was how the idea, I've been wanting to do it for a while, but I just didn't feel qualified because I was a new quilter. I didn't feel I had the skills, the necessary skills or the, you know, I just didn't feel like I had it to get people together. But you know, that's the thing about passion. Sometimes all you have is your passion before the works come. All you have is your passion. And then that was Mostly that was all I had. I just had passion. I just knew that a conference a coming together of people who love African fabrics was what we needed, you know. And so all of February, all of March, all of April, all of May, all of June, I was putting the conference together, contacting people. Some said no, a big fat no. Some said some were so amazing, so welcoming, you know, so accommodating, and so that was how we hosted the first conference. And, I, and if you know how it went, for those who were there, there were a lot of challenges. You know, everything was kind of like, but, but we did it. In the end, we did it. And, and I'm so proud of that, that we actually did it. And we got the value, you know, the value from um, which was what was intended from the, uh, in the first place. You know, so that was the second, that was the first one in 2020. And then in 2021, we had it again in July and another amazing group of speakers, you know, we came and, um, and so this is the third year that we're doing it. And that is just so amazing. Um, so if you've ever attended a conference, if, you, if you've attended, if you attended the first summit, you attended the second summit, I want you to let me know in the comments. And then I want you to tell me what your favorite part of the summit was. Um, 
because that's so encouraging for me, you know, um, just hearing that. And I do get that. I, I, I get that a lot. I get a lot of emails and a lot of comments, you know, about how amazing and awesome the conference was and how it just emboldened um, people to just take a hold of that fabric and cut it. So one thing you need to know about the tribe, about the Quilt Africa tribe, is that we are in no, uh, um, no, no hoarding zone. We want to use our fabrics. That is so important. Because what we're trying to do also is create a place for African fabrics in the quilting world, in the creative world. You know, so that people, when you think about fabrics and your instinct like me was to go for the fabrics that I found around me. And I was like, uh, you don't you don't need to pause. You just need to go and just do it. So we don't encourage stashing, stash building. <laughs> we don't we encourage stash building, but we don't encourage hoarding. So we like that when you get your fabrics, that you just have a project in mind and you follow through. You know that you have a pattern, you get your fabrics for it, you follow through and you finish. And that has been the premise of the challenges. That has also been the premise of the summit. That we bring in people who will inspire you, who will show you and teach you skills and a few techniques. And the idea is that at the end of it all, you need to go back and you need to do something with it. You know, so um, yes. First answer was yes. That's that's Montika saying that she attended the first and the second summit and what she enjoyed was the knowledge to help spark creativity in, in self challenges as well as connecting on a common thread. And honestly, that's what the conference is all about. Just give you the amazing speakers that we've got we've come to know over time um, and their passion. You know, there's just something about passion, their passion and their work ethic. That completion is so important. That's something that I struggle with, um, I would say, because of demands. But I also know that you can create the time if you needed to. You know, all the speakers that we have had on are compulsive creators. They are prolific creators. They have, I mean, they have their body of works, their portfolio. And what that helps someone like me is it lets me know that it's possible it's possible for me to see a project started completed yeah you would have some work in progress and some abandoned ones every here and now but the important thing is to finish and the important thing is to to go for what you like if you like it do it and you can't hate it i haven't seen a work with african fabrics that anybody hates or that the person who created it hates so um that is the premise of the conference. So, yeah, please chip in if you've attended the conference. Um, how did you find it? What was the thing for you about the summit that you loved? That's so important to share that. And um, for me, I, I, I didn't even realize that being around all this creativity was, was impacting me. I didn't realize that I was just soaking it up, you know, and absorbing it until I just started creating the time to sit, um, to sit on my sewing machine and just create, you know. And when I am on that flow, oh my goodness, I am all over the place. I scatter everywhere, you know, I don't even pay attention to anybody because that's now my me time where I can sit down and the image in my head, I'm able to bring it out. And honestly, the thing about creating time for yourself when working with African fabrics, it, it begins to whisper to you. There's something I've heard, I've, I saw I saw this on, a, on an African cooking post from a group where they do African cooking. And they said that Africans don't follow recipes. We don't follow recipes when we are cooking. They said, we don't measure salt and measure peppers, that we just keep sprinkling until the voice of the ancestors says stop. And of course, you know that African culture is just based on ancestors looking out for you. And so I can tell you that when you start working with African fabrics, the fabrics will begin to speak to you. They begin to speak to you. And then that helps you build confidence. You know, honestly, I can tell you that when I'm working, the fabrics speak to me. 
I might resist because I come into the preconceived idea of what I want. But by the time I allow the fabrics around me and the idea in my head to marry, then it's like the thing takes a life of its own. I begin to just put pieces together and I begin to, it just comes together and then I'm fast because there's no struggle. There's no conflict. There's no, I'm not lost. I know what to do. Somehow I just know what to do. I'm listening and I'm like, no, this won't work. No, this would work. And then I, you know, I just, and then I'm, I'm, I, I'm quickly able to get through and, um, and to, to do that. So that is ancient African secret. I just leaked to you that if you work with African fabrics, they will speak to you and, um, oh, thank you so much. I actually, oh, thank you so much. Though I can't see who is speaking, but, um, okay. Someone said no name. I found the second quote Africa summit by accident and I'm so glad I did. So thank you so much. Welcome. And I'm happy that you stayed. Um, and then uh, someone else is asking whether we will have the African proverbs challenge. Oh, I didn't know that it was. Um, I wasn't sure about how it was received, so that's why I was a bit lukewarm at the last summit, but um, if it's something that you enjoy, it's something that excites me. I actually have a whole book of proverbs. You won't believe it. I have a whole book of proverbs because I love African proverbs. What they do for me is that, well, they are a reflection of life. Um, they are a reflection of life, and I find that, oh, that's Karen. Oh, hi, Karen. Yeah. So um, I find that there's a proverb for every situation in my life. And when it comes to African fabrics, there's no conflict between, um, sorry, African proverbs. There's no conflict between my faith and the truth of the proverbs. So I absolutely love proverbs. I have a whole book of proverbs. Anytime I hear a good one from a friend or from someone from another tribe or, you know, I just come across it, I just... Say, okay, say it again, and then I write it, and then I put it back, put it in my book, because it's just so amazing. It's so rich. It's so beautiful. Yeah. The summit connects like-minded creative persons together to share knowledge and encouragement with each other. That's absolutely true. You know, so um, that is so true. And I don't think I'll be telling a lie if I said that I'm the person who has gotten the most benefits from, from the summit, from the tribe. The, the Facebook group and the block of the month. I forgot to mention the block of the month. The block of the month has been integral to the African fabrics movement because people one-on-one, -on -one, we come together one-on-one -on -one and we're able to work through patterns and we're able to see and learn, you know? And that has that's also a very, very important part of the of the of the movement. So you have the challenges, you have the summits. And then you have the block of the month. And of course, you have the Facebook group because that's what ties all of that together, you know, and it's just so amazing. So um, in the Facebook, in the block of the month, we've been playing with proverbs. Um, we've been playing with um, the connection for the connection between the patterns, you know, and the African culture. That's something I'm so passionate about. Um, I keep saying that if I hadn't become an architect, I would have become an archaeologist just because I was imagining when I was when I was getting ready to get into the university, I was imagining myself going on digs around the ancient Nigerian cities and then move on to the African cities, you know, just to dig up the lives of my ancestors in different places that had come before me, check out the food they ate, the crockery they used, the clothes they wear you know, the language and their art and all of and their patterns. Yeah, I'm still so, maybe I should go back to school for archaeology. I don't know, because I'm still so passionate about it. I love archaeology. I love history. Um, but I think archaeology has first place in my heart. One of the things that I used to do was I used to read up um, all about archaeological digs. I know so much about Pompeii. I know so much about um, Hel um, Helena. That's the second volcanic city in Rome. I know about the Egyptian digs. And you know, the unfortunate thing is that we don't really have um, archaeological information in Africa. So yes, I just may go back to school for, 
for that archaeological degree, for that archaeology degree. Um, it's, I'm always talking about it. I'm always thinking about it. So, yeah, maybe I should do that. And then begin to go to some of the sites, the ancient kingdoms, you know, and just see, just who knows. We just never know what you will find. Um, because I know that over time we found some cities in Kaduna, in, in I think, Imo, in the east. Um, the settlements have been dug up, you know, and that gave information about um, the life of people and the art as well. Um, you know, so yes. So, uh, yes, there's overwhelm. <laughs> We tend to overwhelm. There's such so much information to share. Um, I'm sorry, I can't see your name, but she said that she attended both conferences and was overwhelmed with the wealth of information shared, the outstanding artist presentations, the international participation, the knowledge on Africa, people, culture, and fabrics. It was invaluable education and overall positive and inspiring experience. This captures it all. All the comments about the com I mean, that is just it. If you can say that, then I know that the work of the summit is like, is achieved. The goal of the summit is achieved. And that just makes me feel so proud. Another thing for me personally about the summit is that it makes me feel seen. As an African, it makes me feel seen. It makes me, it validates my Africanness. Not that I need validation, but that's just the way of the world. Everybody needs to be seen. Everybody needs to be appreciated. Everybody needs to be thought of as bringing something to the table. And when anyone feels less than that, then it's problems begin to arise, resentment and anger. And then everybody's wondering, why are you so angry? You shouldn't be angry, but yeah, you're, I'm angry because you're overlooking me. Or I'm angry because you're not validating me. I'm angry because I'm a person and you're not acknowledging me. So personally for me, that's what the summit does. You know, it gives me that platform to tell my own African story, um, you know? So it, um, it's, it's just amazing for me personally um, as an African, because of course, you know, as an African, the third world story, the third world tag that follows us about, the poor infrastructure we struggle with, and so many other negatives. And so where you have something, you want to shine. And so I want to thank everyone who is part of the Quote Africa tribe because you have given me a place of my personal validation. But that doesn't mean that it's just about me. It can also be about you. It can be about your creativity. It can be about your your heritage maybe, it can be about your experience of Africa. I have met amazing people who love Africa, sometimes I think more than me, and they're not black. <laughs> they love Africa so much. You know, they talk about the jungle. I don't want to go to no African jungle. I want some comfort. <laughs> you know, but they're so um, amazing. They're so looking forward to going back to the villages and the fetching water from a well and uh, going on safaris in the bush. I don't want to do any of that. <laughs> I want some comfort. You know, so sometimes I tell them that it looks like you love this Africa more than I do. And sometimes they need validation as well because they also have an African story to tell. They have an African story to tell and they also get bashed for, you're not even African. Why should you even talk about Africa? But no, Africa is for everybody. Honestly, Africa is for everybody. As an African, I can tell you that, that anytime anyone comes into Nigeria, comes into Abuja, comes into my home, it doesn't matter where you're from. We're so welcoming and we're so accommodating and we're so, um, we just love everyone. And I, I've said, I think I've said it before, but I think it's because of that accommodating nature. That's why the continent was raped because you just welcome with open arms and you didn't imagine that people would have ulterior motives or would, could be so devious to show you love and then not be loving, you know? Um, you know, we're, we're kind of blunt. You would know that um, I'm not your friend. I will take a warlike stance. That's the African way. People hardly come with subterfuge to try and deceive you to get their way. No. You know, <laughs> if I'm not, I don't want to be your friend, you will know. Uh, my stance is, is, is definitely, if I want to fight you, you will know. 
because it's a thing of pride to stand for yourself. You don't, um, you're not sneaky about it. That's, it's, it's, it's an African heritage thing. It's in our blood. You don't have to be sneaky. You can stand and say, this is my truth. I don't like you. I don't want to have anything to do with you. And if you don't like that, you want to fight me, I fight you back. <laughs> That's the African way, you know? So, so I'm just so happy that the, the tribe, Quilt Africa, is for everybody. You know, it's for everybody. I've met people who have lived in the Congo. Um, Hollis, you know, spent a lot of time in Burkina Faso. She has a Burkina Faso daughter. Um, there's also um, there's also um, Hilda, who also lived in Ghana. I've met people who worked in Nigeria. Yolanda worked in Sokoto. You know, and it just makes me feel so amazing just to hear those stories and um, um, Primrose is from Kenya, you know, she's from Indian um, um, descent, but she's Kenyan and she knows so much about Africa that you can't even imagine, you know, and Melody, Melody lived in Central Africa and she knows so much about Africa, like the language and the, you know, so much. And so everybody has an authentic African, authentic African story. And I know so many people who's DNA tells them that they are Nigerians, you know? Um, and that makes me feel so happy because it's for, for us, it's a connection point. For us, it's um, that's, that's where our connection is. And, but beyond that, our love for beauty, our creativity, you know, that's what is so amazing. Um, every other thing is kind of like an addition. It's like seasoning to the pots, you know, to the pot of our creativity. And it just makes us closer and, um, and I think that if we can, and that is not to say that we don't have differences. Yeah, every once in a while we have differences because the world will not let you be. You come to your safe and hap um, happy state of mind or to your happy place, the happenings in the world will not let you be. You know, and so there are influences. But yes, I think at the end of the day, we remain people who just love creativity and who are out to make a positive impact in the world with our. <clears throat> excuse me, make a positive impact in the world with our works, with our finished um, goods. Yeah, so um, Karen is saying she loves the background stories on the African of the, uh, yeah, the African block, that's in the block of the month. And education is key. Education is key. Education breeds respect. When you know that um, us bush, bush people in Africa, there's a reason why we do things. You know, then you begin to appreciate it from a point of view. <clears throat> Sorry. And then you realize that your, or maybe the, the, the Western narrative isn't the final narrative. You know, um, maybe coming down to Africa and finding people just in loins cloth and, and leaves, loins cloth, loins cloth of <clears throat> animal skin or leaves. The temperature will not allow me to bundle up and cover from head to toe. It just wouldn't. I'll just roast. You know, and so when you open your mind to differences, then you become understanding. And then when you understand, then respect comes. And then you say, oh, you mean um, in spite of these adversities or in spite of these conditions, um, you've been able to do this, you know. And so that's for me, that's what I love about, that's what I love about um about being part of Quilt Africa, being part of the tribe. Another thing that I, abs okay, this is one thing that we're talking about this year. This year, we're all about finishing works. I mean, even me that you know, I, in the past couple of years, I haven't really done much, but this year I have, it's like I'm on a roll. I'm finishing stuff, I'm digging out old blocks, you know, and I'm just getting them done. And I'm so happy about that. So our focus this year as a tribe is to finish our works. If you know that there, there are blocks undone, blocks unfinished, blocks unpieced, quilt tops unfinished, I think we need to dig them out and we need to... You, you actually need to get them finished because when it's time for the summit, you're just going to learn some more. You know, and you don't want something holding you back. You want to get in with what the speakers are teaching and you want to give it a try. Um, 
that's another thing we do in the block of the month. Some people say, oh, no, I'm not going back to this block ever. <laughs> but at least I'm happy that I tried, you know? So that knowledge is so important. Just having the skills, knowing the techniques. And um, we did the wedding ring block. Even I, I escaped, which is not a surprise anyway. I escaped, but a lot of people got it done, but said, hey, I'm not going back to that wedding ring again. <laughs> I'm done, you know? But it was just so good to have that experience. So I encourage you that between May to um, between May and June, hey, you have to finish your your any project that is hanging because by the time July comes, you're going to get a whole lot more. You'll be surprised how much you're going to get. So much um, information and so much. I'm so happy that when I introduced uh, Miss Betty, Betty Ford Smith. People were like, hey, we've never heard of the pine cone. Or I've heard of it, but yeah, I want an opportunity to actually do it. So that's just one. You don't know what Miss Sherry is going to bring to the table or Sue or the other speakers that I'm going to introduce in the next few days. You don't know what they're bringing. And then you would want to try it. And then we really don't want a box full or a cabinet full of unfinished works. So this year, we're all about unfinished works. And the second thing is that this year, we're about entering them into shows. We're about exhibiting them. We're about gifting them. We're about putting those works out in the world because we also want to make changes. Um, when you're comfortable and you're okay in your comfort, then change doesn't happen. But when you get comfortable, you settle in a little, then you begin to make moves to change the world, to change your world. We just take it bite size at a time, just our environment. Um, and for me, what I've done this year to change, to, to, to just spread myself beyond, um, beyond the tribe is I've, I, I have um, two, two ladies who are now working with me um, who are learning about piecing, they're learning about pre-cuts, they're learning about piecing, they're learning, just the other day I told, I, I explained to Grace the difference between sashing and borders. So I told her that the next time I say we're going to do a project and they're sashing, you need to just know what, what that means. And if I tell you, go and look for a suitable fabric for borders, you need to know what I'm talking about, you know, um, so for me, that's how that's one way that I'm pushing out of my comfort zone and trying to impact my world. It's just about my world. It's not about doing anything big, crazy, just about my world. Another thing is that I've reached out to someone I've worked with before. I don't have long arm service. I've said that before. I've contemplated shipping to the US, having having it quilted and then shipping it back. You know, because I can never, beyond the straight lines, I can never do anything with my quilts. And that kind of pains me sometimes when I see the intricate patterns that some of your quilts have. But one thing I did was that I also liaised with Mr. Simon. Mr. Simon makes duvets. He actually makes beddings. He actually started making curtains for houses. And then he learned how to make duvets. And so now he just makes regular duvets. I mean, nothing fancy. Just slap fabric. Just slap um, the wadding between the fabrics and just like wide spaced lines just take them from top to bottom but the last time i took something to him we actually had a conversation about stitching in the ditch he didn't know that that was what it was called you know but and that was something that was elevating his his understanding of what you know of his craft you know, and so we stitched in the ditch and then we did that. And then I talked to him a little bit about, I think you should do some binding because right now we don't bind. <laughs> we don't do binding. We just do the stitch around and then turn it out. And that's our quilt. But, you know, I'm trying to introduce him, trying to lure him into contemplating binding with the, you know, the whole way of doing binding. Um so I, I don't know if he has beaten yet, but at least the bait is out there, you know, and so I hope he takes it. So those are some of the ways that I'm trying to just impact, you know, around me. Um, so I'd love to hear something different that you've done this year or in the past six months, 
if you could, or in the past, I don't know, in the past one year, have you done anything different? Have you shown a quilt? Um, have you entered a quilt in a show? Have you gifted more quilts than you've ever had? Have you, I know Montika has had an exhibition and I, I was really so excited about that, that she had an exhibition of mostly African fabrics, you know, and that is just so amazing. And she inspired me and I said, okay, I need to get some works finished because I would want an exhibition too. And, you know, I think an exhibition for me would be amazing in my environment because that would give people a chance to really see what quilting is about when they see my finished works. I can't go around saying that I'm quilting, I'm a quilter and that I don't have anything. So that, that really inspired me to think about hosting an exhibition for of my finished quilts here in Nigeria, here in Abuja. You know, I think that would just be awesome to call people and say, hey, come and see quilts. For sure, someone would want to be interested in learning. So those are some of the ways that I'm push, getting out of my comfort zone to ensure that the quilting message, the message of creativity, um, the, and you know, Mr. Simon was so proud of himself when he finished that stitch in the ditch. Oh my God, he was puffing like a peacock because the other people, the other, the other market people around his stall, they all gathered in front of his shop. And they were like, wow. You know, they were just ooing and eyeing. And he was like, yeah, you know, I did it. And so that's just the thing about quilting. When you you become a co-creator with God, that's the way I see it. You're, you're co-creating. You think it. I mean, even if somebody writes the pattern, you still have to make some decisions on your own. And you, you quilt it. And then it's there for everybody to enjoy. And that quilt, they enjoyed it. And they complimented us and... You know, they praised me and I felt so good, you know, and they they wowed him and he was like, yeah, you know, you know how men can be. He was just puffing and he was really so happy. So that's some of the ways that I'm I'm stepping out of my own comfort zone, um, stepping out of my comfort zone. I did a collage with my kids, a fabric collage. You know, I'm just trying to just get the message out there. I'm, I've been talking with an organization about training a group of women. It doesn't have to be big. You know, but it would be amazing for me if I could host um, a group of women. And um, there's also a plan for us to do something by the end of the year, but I don't want us to get into that yet. So um, as the plans come together, I'll share that. Yeah, so um, I think another point to make about the conference is the timing it was held. In the midst of a frightening time with COVID-19 shutdowns and isolation, the conference was a gift and opened up the world to us virtually and kept creative, connected, inspired, and hopeful. That is so true. Because honestly, because of the conference, I didn't even feel the pressure. I didn't feel the, the negative effect of the lockdown. For me, the lockdown was a perfect opportunity not to have school runs, to, do, to plan the conference. And then begin to make connections. I will talk to Hilda in Europe. I'll talk to Sue in Australia. I'll talk to um, Dr. Tony in the US. So for me, it was a really exciting time for me as well. I didn't even feel that COVID. I was so, you know, the lockdown became an opportunity for me to just double down and learn everything that I needed to learn. It was such a huge learning curve for me. You know, so I absolutely agree with you. It opened up our world at a time when everything was so scary. We were just wondering what, what was life going to be after March of 2020, you know. So I think that was also incredibly, that's a very excellent point. Thank you so much for bringing that out. Montika is saying that she's working on a Japanese borrow jacket, purse, and hat. I plan to do this, oh, wow, with African fabrics. So she's doing that with African fabrics um, after, after this is completed. So that's absolutely amazing. Borrow stitching is something that I'd also like to, because you know, remember we had Sandra Lee, she came on and she talked to us about stitching and then we compared notes between the African method of stitching and the Japanese method of stitching. And I think maybe one of these days, what we need to do is get um, is get someone, an African master stitcher, so that they can also expose us to stitch art the African way. I think that is important. Because you see, the truth is that we talk about the Japanese shibori, we talk about the 
borrow stitching of the Japanese. But do you know, we have all of this in Africa and it's in our culture and it's also incredibly vibrant and beautiful and painstaking. If you see the work, the amount of work that they do on some of the regal gowns that the kings, the emirs wear, you'll be bowed over, you know? So it's also something that is worth exploring. So that gives me an idea as well. Thank you for that, Monsika. And someone is saying that I'm doing paper pieced elephant abstractions quilt. Wow. Oh, I love that elephant. I think I know Violet Craft. That's the elephant with the many pieces, um, pieces, the numbered pieces with the big trunk in front. Oh, God, I love that. I think that's on my to-do list as well. It's, abs it's on my to-do list, but oh, it looks very daunting. So well done to you for taking that on. Um, and we can't wait to see that. And um, you didn't say whether you were using African fabrics for it. I've never seen that elephant in African fabrics. And I think, um, and I think that elephant looks stupendous in African fabrics, if I may say so. <laughs> I think it will absolutely look great in African fabrics. So I think maybe we need to challenge ourselves. Maybe that's a challenge waiting to happen. Um, Violet crafts elephants in African fabrics. Who knows? But I'll take note of that. Um, okay, someone is working on a Kawandi jacket. So maybe if you drop a comment and you didn't sign up with Streamy, you didn't give StreamYard permission to show me your name, maybe you could um, just put your name at the, like sign off. So that I mean, I just I just love seeing who is here and I love talking. I could get on my phone, but I don't want to be distracted. So I'm not looking at the phone and looking at um, looking at what we're doing. But maybe I should just get to the to the tribe and see and see what's happening. Let me just do that so I can get the names. I really want to talk to you. Um, I really want to talk to everyone. Let me just get to the page and see. Yes. So you see this thing I'm doing here, just just to kind of like give you. Um, advance just a little bit of information about the summit. Um, looking, look, trying to look at the comments and trying to pay attention to what's happening. You know, we're not doing that anymore this summit. So, for those of you who endured that from me, the past summits, I want to assure you that this summit we have taken care of that. Our director of events and programs, Jerry is cleaning it up and it's going to be a much more enjoyable um a much more enjoyable experience so no more trying to get the comments and trying to keep myself engaged and not get distracted and all of that so i'm excited about that because it's um okay so from the group i can see the names but here i can't i can't see the names okay yeah hi michelle michelle is in texas and Texas is Pacific, is, question, is Texas Pacific time or is it a totally different time zone? Okay, Deborah is working on the Kawandi chair. Oh, Deborah, you've graduated to the jacket. How is it coming along? Deborah is the one who gave us the tutorial for the Kawandi um, quilt. It's somewhere in the group. So maybe if you are interested, it's a very good tutorial. It's short and it's not overwhelming, but it gives you the basics. So if you wanted to, if you wanted to try Kawandi, I think you should try that tutorial. You'll be surprised what you can do with it. Oh gosh, why am I not surprised? Is Liz that is doing the elephant? Liz, you sure know how to pick your projects, and I can't wait to see that. I know it's going to be amazing. Your fabric choices, I can't wait to see them. Whether African fabrics or any other fabric, you know how to choose your fabrics, and they always come out so, so, so amazing. Yeah, so great. Okay, yeah, this is doing the elephant. Okay, so yes, yeah, so I think I'm caught up with the comments now. Okay, so the summit, the summer summit is very important. That is the topic of today's live. That the summer summit is so important. And if you read through the comments, you will see um, some of the comments that um, pass attend pass people that have presented and attended, you know, um, have had to say. So basically I'm coming on to tell you that 
early bird res registration for the summit is starting on Sunday. And the summer summit is really very important because of all the things that we've talked about, the community, the knowledge, the information, the culture, you know, the connections, the creativity, the skills that you learn, the skills that I've learned, the, the you know, there's some serious osmosis going on in the Quilt Africa Fabrics tribe. Just by looking at the fabrics, you get creative, you get gifted, you know, and juices just start flowing in your head and you're thinking, oh, I could do this, I could do that. You know, and I know sometimes that inner voice is saying, uh, are you sure? But just go for that voice that is telling you you can do something. You know, so um, yes, exactly. Be there or be square. I like that. <laughs> she says, yeah, Carrie says be there or be square. I like that. You know, so um, tomorrow what's going, I can't believe um, it's been an hour already. So tomorrow I'm going to be talking about new format of the summit. Things are, I mean, a lot has changed. As you can see, it's just May, but we have our speakers, I mean, so much. You could say, hey, come and have this summit this Sunday and we'd be ready for you. I tell you, we have made preparations so far ahead that you wouldn't be, that you'd be very surprised. We're ready. You know, so I want to come on tomorrow, same time, 10, 9, 9 a.m. Central. Um, <laughs> 9 a.m. Central. And, and um, 9 a.m. Central, same time. And I just want to break down what the summit is going to look like this year and um yeah what the summit is going to look like this year what's different what remains the same what has changed and um and all of that so thank you so much for coming i hope you'll be there tomorrow you'll be here tomorrow same time 9 a.m central so what i'm doing here is i, I usually think in eastern time so I've shifted to Central. Oh, 7 a.m. in California. Wow. So I've shifted to Central time now. So my brain is having to change gears. So I don't say the time in Eastern, which is what I'm most familiar with. But I've moved to Central. And, and soon I'll move to Mountain time. And then I'm going to move to... I'm going to move to Pacific. Okay, so I think the, the answer is that Texas is central. How is Texas central? I thought Texas was close to California. Or is it just south? I know it's south, but I thought it was south, west, south, southwest. I, and I thought it would be Pacific time. Okay. So that's just me working out my geography, my American, <laughs> my US geography. Okay. So we will be. Okay, going back to bed now. All right. <laughs> yeah, but it's been one hour of fun just um, talking with everyone. Thank you so much for coming. And like I said, tomorrow we're going to break down. Okay, yeah, how, how do you give permission? Tomorrow we'll break down the summit. And so maybe I'll send out, um, I'll send out information on how you can give permission, how you can give StreamYard permission to see your name to so that i can see your name i i just you know i know i know almost everyone and i just love saying hello to you because they're always kind of like um information background information that you know we can talk about so so oh uh, so deborah i'll drop that in the i'll drop that in the group with the next post a link maybe so you can just read it and you know how to how to give permission so that I can see your name and we can just have a wonderful time chatting and yeah, learning. Okay. So that's it. Thank you so much for coming. Texas is in the Gulf. Where is Mexico? Is Mexico? Okay. So yeah, I, I can't help it. I just love learning. Um, yeah. So tomorrow we'll be there. We'll be here. And like Karen said, be here or be square. 
So, <laughs> and sometimes we just want to be curves or half square triangles. So please be here tomorrow. I'll see you at 9 a.m. Central. And if you have any questions at all, um, get them ready for tomorrow. Um, I won't say drop them here because I might not come back to this chat. But if you come with it tomorrow, then I'll answer um, whatever questions. And then, of course, at the end of tomorrow, we'll also have questions because it's now about this year's summit proper. You know, um, yes. So thank you guys so much um, for coming. I really appreciate it. Texas is on the... Okay, so I'm, I think what's going to happen is I'm going to look at the map. Texas is on the Gulf near Mexico, but it's still not on Pacific time. So I have to see it to believe it. I have to see it to believe it. Uh, to understand it rather, not believe it. I have, just have to see it. Because I had thought it was this way this way and then down so i assumed it should be on pacific time okay so i'll check my map now making the african map has let me re um made me realize that there's so many countries that i was taking for granted in africa and i'm like oh so this is close to this so i think that's what's happening with me with the american um map so i'll check it out and then i'll give you my feedback tomorrow <laughs> Yay. Thank you so much. Yes. All right. So see you tomorrow, everyone. Thank you so much for coming by.